believe, believe it is wrong for people to place stuff in front of pictures of the shapes. The flowers and other stuff should be for the sake of Allah. I don't know. Could you please correct me if I'm wrong? Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, you, you are very good at that in answering this question. I mean, in questioning this, giving this question, very good manner. So I will say nicely also. <laughs> uh, but yes, not too good. Uh, but if you say this is for the sake of Allah, all these things, pictures, I mean, flowers, everything should be for the sake of Allah, then what are you going to put over the picture of Allah? Hmm? Are you going to put it over the picture of Allah? No, it's kind of funny, right? So, for the sake of Allah, yes, you must do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to Shariat, Shariat is keeping everything very strictly, very safely, because mankind in their mankind is weak, and in their weakness, they will commit so many wrong things and enter into dangerous areas. And if it is not checked properly, they will push themselves to the limit and they will enter into dangerous areas. They will. Those are the people who just want to push the limits because they are looking to push the limits to get away with it instead of doing things for the sake of Allah. So now, as a difference now. Within the Shariat, there are people who want to leave the Shariat. The Shariat is there saying, no, we cannot. There are people within that they love the Shariat. They don't want to break the Shariat. And they understand what the Shariat is doing. But these are the people that they understand the law and the spirit of the law better than anyone else. And when it's used in its proper place, in its proper time, in the proper people, it is a medicine. Now, that time, you say, for example, let's say the Sharia is, let's say the religion is a mountain. And the Sharia is when you climb up the mountain, you climb the religion, they are putting fence around. Because if they don't put that fence, people, they will jump. They will make accident. They will push each other. So that is very uh, mm, powerful uh, barricade there to save people from their own selves, from their danger. But there are some people who wish to climb higher. And those people who wish to climb higher, it is not in their, uh, in their uh, nature to jump down, to push people, or to do any sort of mischief. They want to climb higher, because the higher you climb, more you can see. The higher you climb, more you can see. Those who are still uh, not understanding themselves, they don't know how to climb, then they have to not only have those fences, but they have to have so many gadgets now putting on. But those who knows and they are no danger and they are given the uh, secret to climb and to know, as you can see these people, they are even adapted themselves to breathing in such high altitudes you see all these mountain climbers carrying thousands of pounds and thousands of dollars worth of equipment and everything. And these ones, just one person, a couple of things going up. But they know their limits too. That is, a pr that is a thing. They say, this one, I'm not going to go. Europeans saying, why not? There's a mountain we have to climb. We say, no. Past this area, we don't go. Because our ancestors say, other people, other spirits, they are living here. This one is dangerous. So, no, we have to climb. That is again ego. We have to climb to the very top. Eh? Then what you win? You put one flag there. What you win? 
and hundreds die. For what? You understand? And so, climbing this religion also, you go according to your ego, without a guide, you will perish along the way also. So many they have done that. So now people are going according to Tasawuf now. And they have a guide. The guide will say, you have to climb higher. You have to climb higher. That's the time you shake and you say, no, I cannot. They say, no, you have to because you have a responsibility. Now it's not for you just to see nice visions, nice vista. But there's responsibility that you have to carry. And those ones that are doing that, they say, now we cannot carry too much equipment. And when we are up there, in order to do our work, we cannot have the fences that are around too much. So now, <coughs> pictures of the shaykhs, the people who know how to carry it, you carry it. People who don't know how to carry it, they start worshipping, even in tariqat, he says, no. These pictures remind us of our shaykh, yes. This we pay respect, but it is still a picture. We don't worship, but at the same time, we give respect, not because of the paper. We give respect because of the image that is there. But, now we don't go overboard, putting garlands of flowers, putting offerings, putting this or that. We don't go overboard with that. Sometimes some people are crazy, they say, okay, let's just put, just let, but it's not a way to worship, you understand? That is okay. So, in a way that we're doing, I'm, I'm not putting here, for example, these ones for my shave. They have no need for toys. Okay? I'm putting this because I want everyone to see that these our children making these little toys here. These are Ottoman figures. They're making it from very humble things for clothes, pegs, and everything. So it's good we're just putting it there. So, inshallah, we will understand this. In the old days, when the murid looks at the face of the shaykh and he closes his eyes, his shaykh's face is already imprinted in his heart. And everywhere he turns, he sees his shaykh's face. Forever. The naqsh is already made there. These days, in the Ahir Zaman, people don't have, murids don't have that kind of faith anymore. And they are being attacked 24 hours with millions of wrong pictures from everything, everywhere. Now it is necessary to have the pictures of the shaykhs to remind them, remind you of Allah. That's it. To remind you of Allah. Then you come in and say, oh, there's a picture of my shaykh. I'm reminded of my shaykh. It's not that picture that is there. There is, oh, this picture. No. It is, you're looking, you're reminded, oh, Allah is looking. I have to be careful now. That's all. But if you understand, you understand. So many people, they don't really understand. They say, well, this lead to um, kufur, will lead to worship. Say, uh, no, it doesn't. Because I've never seen anyone in my lifetime, let's say 500 years, 800 years. Let's say pictures first came about when, let's say, 100 years ago. And recently he started to put this like 20 years ago, maybe. Let's say 30 years ago even. Because 30 years ago not everyone can afford even to take picture and to develop and everything. I've never seen anyone that they look at the pictures of our Shaykh and so much that, that they became uh, kafir, uh, picture worshippers. They come out from Islam starting to worship our Shaykh. No. Just as people are saying, oh, you praise Prophet so much that it becomes a uh, kufr, that you start thinking that he's Allah. Never you're going to think. In 1,500 years of Islam, never any group that loved the Prophet so much that they say the Prophet is Allah. Just the name of that. You understand? 
two completely different entities, complete. This is also the, the miracle and the beauty of Islam. But don't go overboard. I know people, especially in different countries, they go overboard. We should balance certain things, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.